It is my pleasure to make your acquaintance, Traveler. I have heard much of your accomplishments. I am the Knave, one of the eleven Fatui Harbingers. Arlecchino, also known as the Knave, also known as Father, unironically. It's been a while since I painted a badass woman, so I thought this is a great opportunity to do so. At the time of painting and recording, her leaks just came out, and I was so hyped to see our first Scythe character in Genshin Impact. I love Scythes. Look, I grew up watching Soul Eater, and that had a major impact on what I think is cool nowadays. And you know, Soul Eater is all about weapons, all about Scythes. So of course I had to draw Arlecchino. And also her burst is super cool. Like aside from Nahida, maybe one of the only characters who actively changes her entire environment when she bursts. So this painting in total took about 10 hours of recorded time. And let me tell you, it was like 10 hours of pain. It started out fine. Um, on screen, you can see that I have made a color thumbnail that I thought was working pretty well. For this one, my main goal was to experiment with color and process, since I feel like I don't really get that experimental with the painting process itself and with colors. I always, you know, in my last painting process video stated that I always sell shade, I always do flat colors, local colors, everything like that. So I wanted to do something a little bit more, quote, artistic this time. So that's what I'm attempting with this piece. But at least in this early stage, the main idea was to have her sitting on her scythe and for us to see the bottom of her shoe. Her shoes are so intricately designed that I was like, it would be really fun to make that the main focal point of this image. And also like, who doesn't want to be stepped on by Arlecchino? So as always, you can see I took a reference photo of the approximate angle that this pose would be at, just so I could get the hand posing correct. I am sitting on a photo stand that you would use for Artist Alley. Very appropriately sized for like a scythe stand-in. On my other screen, I also pulled up a 3D model of a pair of heels at that angle so it could accurately reference what that would look like. You can kind of see me deviating from the initial color sketch about like, you know, the angle and the size of the shoe. One major mistake that I definitely made with this illustration was that I didn't properly decide on what the perspective was going to be. Obviously it's bottom up, but we can see the bottom of her shoe, the bottom of her ass, but we're looking at the top of her other foot and the top of the ground. Now that's a very confusing perspective to have. And I was kind of coping like it would be fine. The, the focus is on how she's cool and hot and not how my perspective is broken as shit. <laughs> so that was what I was thinking. Like, you know, let's just focus on the character and hope that if I draw her well enough, the rest doesn't matter too much. Now, this sort of mentality never ever bodes well for the future of a painting, especially one that you want to be more complex and one where the character definitely exists in a real space and is not just floating on a blank background. So it's good to resolve these things early instead of like having to course correct over and over and over again in the later stages of a painting. So here we're witnessing my second mistake, which was going straight into color after sketching. Now this is always something that I've wanted to try to do because I'm like, lots of good painters can't just paint off a sketch. They don't need to do line art or anything like that. They can continue to add detail in the painting stages. So I screenshotted my color thumbnail, put it on the side and started to fill in the color based on my sketch. And this gave me a lot of grief, I'll be honest. Um, I don't know why I denied myself the pleasure of doing line art, which is literally my favorite part of the artistic process, but I guess I was just experimenting, just seeing if this was something that I enjoyed, something that I could do. But perhaps part of me knew that I couldn't do line art on this because it was illogical to begin with, like the perspective. Everything except for like kind of the top half of this character was pretty illogical. And also as someone who is used to doing local colors first and then layer masking like shadows, gradients, texture, lighting effects on top of that, doing this process where like the colors are not local, like she has black pants 
but the black is green in this. Um, I think that really messed me up. I was just getting really confused because I had added lighting as well in my thumbnail. The lighting is red in that and I did not know how to deal with adding colored lighting on top of colored local color that was not actually the local color that it was. All these struggles and like questions that I had about this painting were just stacking on top of each other and none of it was getting answered. I was also not really that satisfied with the way her face was turning out and I also added lipstick to her but like Arlecchino does not wear lipstick. She has dry crusty ass lips. <laughs> As one of my friends put it, the expression did not feel correct to me. Like this sort of face does not feel like Arlecchino. She's very intimidating. She knows more than you. She will step on you. She is a villain essentially. But this sort of expression where it's like a far away gaze did not feel correct. I did not understand the feeling I was trying to portray with this sort of pose and character and acting. So that was also one thing that was grating on me. Her hair, like the way that her hair was flowing was not feeling correct to me. Nothing was really feeling correct to me at this point. I don't know if you noticed, but Photoshop did crash at one point and that was basically an encapsulation of how I was feeling the entire time. I'm like, okay, you know, Photoshop crashed. Maybe I didn't really save. I lost some progress. Should we just give up? I kind of feel like giving up. Um, but every time you feel like giving up, uh, that's just about when you gain the most freedom to just go completely nuts on this drawing. Because it's like, if I'm gonna trash it anyway, let's just see what would happen if I just changed everything and went the direction that I kind of am intuitively feeling that it should go. So as you can see in the last few seconds, I made a bunch of changes. I was just experimenting with, could I recon the sketch? Do I need to start completely over? Or maybe it was the background the problem. Maybe I could just like add some visual elements, like things coming out of the cracks to bring the whole piece together. Just throwing anything at the board to see if it would stick. And I ended up settling with like changing her face and expressions and making the colors and the style a lot more blocky and shape heavy as opposed to the painterly look it was before. So I went from painterly to a more cell shaded look. You might say I regressed, but this feels so much better to me personally. Before it was technically fine, but it did not feel like me. It did not feel satisfying for me. And this more simpler, more graphic direction appeals to me a lot more. The next few minutes of this are pretty self-explanatory. I'm just adding details in and feeling a lot more comfortable with this new style. And I would recommend not looking too closely at what I've drawn because it is 100% not accurate to her design at all. But that's just how it goes when you're drawing Genshin characters and Hoyo characters. <laughs> it's actually been an extremely long time since I drew a Genshin character with their full actual canonical outfit. This is why I prefer putting characters in like modern AUs because it's like I don't want to deal with this. How about we just put her in like a suit, you know? That does remind me I was thinking of doing like a drawing slash design series where I redraw Genshin characters but as like shonen anime characters. Like the style just dumbed down in a way where it would be like more appealing to me personally. Like, I know that Genshin is getting an anime made by Ufotable, but the trailer, it kind of shows that they're not really simplifying anything and I just feel so sorry for the animators who are gonna have to like draw every single detail on these characters. Like, that's insanity. I can't even draw one single illustration and you want these people to draw like 24 frames per second. <laughs> Mad respect for anyone who's done like a Genshin fan short where they draw and animate all these characters. I also thought about, in adjacent to that, like redesigning Genshin characters, but like purely based off of their description, like a complete redesign of them. Not taking into consideration what they currently look like or the world of like Genshin, but like placing them in a world that is more stylized, more shonen, just like if I was the one who got to <laughs> design these characters based off their pure description. I think that could be super fun. 
So anyway, I'm just trying to kill time until I make it to my next major change I made to this illustration. Because at this moment, I'm like feeling pretty good about it. I fixed the style, I added detail to the scythe, I'm seeing the potential. Oh, also at this point, my mother came in and looked at this and said that her feet looked like pig hooves. So really, thank you so much, mother. That boosted my confidence so much. So then I had to spend some time fixing her feet and her shoes, which I initially was pretty confident in, but apparently they looked too thick, according to my mom. So I had to redo them completely. Honestly, I don't know why I didn't just like trace a 3D model to begin with. The original 3D model I used w had like huge platform heels, so that was probably why the feet were looking too thick. Um, that is something I failed to take into consideration, so I found reference of a more flat, more fitting heel to use for Orokino, and hopefully that looks a lot better. <laughs> and you might be looking at this like, this looks finished, this looks good, everything's working, you have achieved what you wanted to achieve, the effects are affecting, and it's framing her body, her scythe is there, like, why would you change it from this? I don't know. I, I went to sleep with it looking like this and I woke up and I looked at it and I was like, I do not want to work on this like this. It does not appeal to me. There's something really wrong with what's happening here. And I think it was probably the ground. The ground is bothering me a lot. The place where the scythe entered the ground. I was having a hard time with the perspective there. Like, obviously. Obviously I was because this perspective makes no goddamn sense, but I was trying to make it make sense. I kept trying. It made sense in the thumbnail. It does not make sense when you execute. Lots of things are like that. I was not using my brain very well in the early stages of making this. So these are the consequences we have to bear. So you see a period of me desperately trying to retcon like the composition of this image. One of the major issues with this is that the scythe, it's difficult for it to read as a scythe and that it was plunging into the ground. So eventually I did come to my senses and I did just like make the ground the foreground. And I was like the place, the exact place where the scythe enters the ground is not that important to this image. In order to keep the perspective consistent, we're not going to see that point. And once I made that change, everything started to make sense. I was like, okay, finally. Things are coming together like they should. At this point, I finally merged all the layers and I could start working on the details and actual rendering. Like just imagine if this was the composition and style I had decided on in the very beginning. This would have been such a painless process, but we made so many detours in order to get to this point. But hey, at least I have finished an illustration. Not often does that happen, so... <laughs> Well, I guess it's okay in the end since my ultimate goal was to experiment and the experiment has showed that I should just stick with what I'm comfortable with, <laughs> I think, because trying out that process that I was unfamiliar with just totally messed me up. So I think I should trust myself more and also use my brain a little bit more in the beginning, which I didn't do this time. Alright, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this very chaotic painting process. As always, this video was posted on Patreon more than a month ago, so if you want to stay up to date with what I'm doing, you can check me out on Patreon. If not, I'll see you around on YouTube.